Welcome to Old Classic Car and here a fantastic collection of old photographs dating to the late 1970s of the incredible Horopito Motors, the Smash Palace on North Island in New Zealand. This is an incredible place and thanks so much to Peter Ward for sending me these photographs and to begin with we have this scene here and wow classic British cars we've got a Triumph Mayflower at the back there and in the foreground an Armstrong Sidley Whitley one of the little 1100 based Riley Kestrels off to the right there. This is an incredible, incredible scrapyard, this junkyard over in New Zealand. It is huge. And the amazing thing is it's still in existence. And many of the cars that feature in this video, this collection of old photographs, are probably still there. Next up, we have a good old Austin A40 Devon. I used to run one of these. Mine was a 1949 car. This was the predecessor to the Austin A40 Somerset separate chassis steel body had the four-door austin devon and the two-door dorset um, this is a four-door car obviously with a sun visor and so on but yeah this is an incredible yard there are videos around i mean look at that place there the cars i'd recommend pausing this video on some of these photographs because just the cars that are there are just incredible there's a very rare a95 westminster estate just in the center just below the center of this particular photograph you can see the two-tone car this was a car that peter pointed out to me when he sent me these photographs there's an e83w van just next to it and then ford prefect so many classic cars look at this a ford no, this is like a model c or a model cx of the late 1930s incredible incredible scenes what an amazing place to visit this is actually available you can just go and walk around it's like an open-air museum almost they will sell parts and presumably like i say many of the cars that feature in these photographs from over 40 years ago are still there so it's well worth looking out if you happen to be on the north island another gaggle of cars here even identifying some of these is quite tricky i mean what have we got there i can't quite make out the badge on the back of that cream colored car but yeah incredible looking place if i ever get to new zealand i will certainly want to pop in here next up at horopito yard or the motors rather we have a singer this is an sm1500 this is a pre-facelift car and throughout this uh, collection you'll see many many photos of old singer cars um, i very rarely come across photos contemporary or more recent of these uh, Singer SM1500s and the Hunters. So to see all the Singers that appear in this scrapyard is just incredible really. I mean, just look at that place there. You've got Vauxhall Victors on the right there. Um, oh no, it's a Cresta, sorry, PB Cresta there. You've got a little van, you've got a front end of, I think, a Chevy. Um, but yeah, all sorts of old cars. What an incredible place to have a mooch around. I'm so grateful to Peter for sending me these photographs. It's incredible to see, really. Oh dear, a little Singer. That's a Singer Hunter. These were built from late 54 to 1956. In Australia, they were called a Singer 1450. I'm not sure if that was the case in New Zealand or not. Um, you've got a more traditional upright grille compared to the SM1500 and a fiberglass body, apparently. Although that one looks a bit rusty. Um, but yeah, it's obviously just been dragged in from somewhere. I wonder if it's still around. Another overall view of the yard at Horopito. Um, all sorts of cars there. Can't really begin to identify them. What's that little yellow car? Is that a Fiat? I suspect there's Beetles in the background. There's a Morris Minor low light in the centre of the photo there with various other Morris Miners around it. Rich pickings there for anyone into their vintage or classic cars for sure. Here's an interesting one. It looks like an A99, Austin A99 Ute. Um, I've never ever seen one of those before. Um, if anyone's watching this who lives near the Horopito Motors Yard or Smash Palace, as it's unofficially known, uh, please let me know if you recognize any of these cars, if any of them you've seen in more recent times. I mean, this is quite a distinctive car, clearly tucked away in a corner somewhere. Another gaggle of interesting old cars here. Is that one of those old Ford? console classics on the right hand side there various parts missing off it what's that in the middle is that a buick or a chevy i'm not quite sure someone will know another overall view here many many british cars as you'd expect all sorts there's a cresta there a little Fiat, uh, is that a saloon or an estate? It's an estate, I think, next to the Thames 400e minibus. We've got an Austin 10 there, just post-war, probably the GS1 series. 
uh, all sorts of cars. The I mean, New Zealand was obviously a huge market for the British car makers post-war. And here we've got a pair of Wolseleys. Which model of Wolseley are we looking at here then? Next up in these incredible photos, we've got a matching pair of Jaguars there. I'm guessing they're Mark 7s, something like that. They don't look too picked over, or those axles on the front end won't be helping. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of these cars don't even look too bad, so maybe they were just dragged in because something simple had gone wrong, or they were just sort of no longer fashionable and been replaced with later cars, and uh, just dragged in to sort of for their fate in the scrapyard. Another overall view there, we've got a truck on the left with V8 Ford front wings on the back of the truck, all sorts of things. There's a nice uh, flatbed of the back there as well. Fiat 500 on the right hand side there, but what's the car in the middle that we can see the back end of? Obviously pre-war, or well, pre-war design at least, but what car is that? Very distinctive mouldings on the back panel there. Oh dear, some more old British iron here. Good grief. So what are we looking at there then? Is that a Lanchester leader? Another overall view of Horopito Motors. Like I say, you can just you can go there still to this day, have a walk around and just to, you know have a wander around to your heart's content, buy parts. And that is just incredible. Apparently they still ship parts all over the world. There's one of those Singer Hunters or Singer 1450s again. Doesn't look too bad a condition, does it? If that was now, that would surely be dragged out. I wonder if any of the cars that feature here did actually see a return to the road. It's quite an earlier car alongside, but what car is that? Looks doesn't look too bad at all, does it really? But that Singer, such a rare sight, especially in this country. If anything, there seems to be more of them in this yard than probably appeared in yards here. There's a rear view of another Singer Hunter. You can see the badge on the back there, which helps with identification, but it doesn't appear to be too much rust on that at all. That's incredible. There's only 4,772 of these were built. They had quite an unusual flat windscreen, a very, very thick windscreen pillars, which was a bit out of date even when these cars were launched. And these were built, like I say, from 54 to 56. And the general view, there's that Model C or Model CX Ford and the E83W van from a different angle. But yeah, all sorts of cars. How many old British cars can you spot there? Certainly quite a few. I can see an American Ford truck on the right hand side there with an A40 van alongside it. That's just an incredible place. I really should get there. <laughs> wow, and just look at that. It's just a sea of old cars. Now, whether it's as disorganised as this still, I'm not quite sure. You can just see another little Ford E83 W van at the very top there. Light coloured, probably white, something like that. But all manner of old cars. What an incredible place this is. <laughs> DKW here appears to be sat on its own somewhat, so uh, I wonder if that one's still there. It doesn't look too bad, doesn't look too picked over either. If you've ever been to this particular yard, please pop a note into the comments. And uh, yeah, I'd be interested to sort of read your memories or your know, thoughts and experiences of visiting this place, because uh, there just aren't places like this in this country anymore. Um, I caught the tail end of the years when you could wander around scrapyards freely, um, but I don't know of any yards like that around here anymore. A few more old British cars here, slowly mouldering away. Back to Singers, and a slightly derelict looking, I'm guessing this is an SM 1500. You can see the rear hinge doors there, makes it quite an unusual car. Uh, I mean, this the SM 1500 was introduced in 1948 and built all the way up till 1954. It was revealed at Earl's Court in October of 1948, the motor show, same year as the Morris Mine and the XK120, the Land Rover and so on. 
quite a gaggle of cars here, some British, some not. Um, we've got a Citroen DS just over on the right hand side there in the distance facing a Rover P4. There's another little singer there, a little white singer missing all its front end and part of the body shell of an Austin A40 Farina between the uh, Rover P4 and the singer. Very sad indeed. What's the red car I wonder? Now presumably this was in an area where some of the better cars had been stashed away. Um, yeah, these look to be in much better condition, these old Fords, V8 Fords, late 1930s, I would guess, at the date. I suppose they could be just post-war, but they're more likely to be pre-war, teardrop headlamps and so on. Beautiful cars. And if you know what happened to these cars or got any updates on them, uh, please let me know. Back to the undergrowth, and the main subject here is another SM1500. Not quite sure what the earlier car on the right is, but this appears to be a Phase 1 Vanguard. Or No, it's another Singer, I think, actually, isn't it? Alongside it, but yeah, these were... I mean, there's about seven, just over 17,000 of these SM1500 were built. They had a separate chassis, hydraulic brakes, and a four-speed column change gearbox. What was unusual is these cars had overhead cam engines. Got a general overview now of another part of the yard. We've got various Vauxhalls on the left-hand side there. I can see an F-Type Victor. One of the earlier E-series cars, maybe a Cresta or a Wyvern, something like that. But yeah, wow, <laughs> what a sight. I can also see a badly mangled standard Vanguard. Anyway, carrying on here at Horopito Motors, we've got, oh, there's a pair of Hillmans there. In fact, the trio of Hillmans. The car on the left has a slightly odd grille, so I'm not sure if that's a Hillman. Um, but certainly the car in the middle missing its headlamps, that's definitely a Hillman Minx. Probably just pre-war, and another one behind it. Um, what else have we got there? Got a PA Vauxhall. More Singer action. If you like your classic Singer cars, this video is for you. And again, another SM1500. Overhead cam engine, 1506cc, the early cars. That was later reduced slightly to 1497. And from 52 onwards, there was a twin carb option, which gave you 76 miles an hour. So, uh, yeah, but it was never a hugely popular car. <laughs> Another general view of the uh, cars at Horopito Motors. What's that in there? We've got a split screen Morris Minor just in the middle there, very pale blue. Much earlier cars all around it. But yeah, I think I could live here. Big old Austin here. Someone's clearly jumped on the roof of this old Survivor. Was it an A70? Oh dear, oh dear. A bit of sun visor there. Someone would have that sun visor off it now, I'm sure. There appears to be a lorry chassis cab alongside it. Identifying some of these cars isn't always easy. Um, but yeah, by all means, pause the video when there's a particular photograph worth studying. Oh, look at that. Good heavens above. One of the old barrel fronted i think they call it fords of the late 1930s little truck what a bobby dazzler that is and you can just see on the left oh there's an a40 farina same color as ours farina gray good heavens there's an old school bus or something in the distance as well cars just everywhere it's incredible now i think this is probably an old holden and more familiar to british eyes at least is that little A30 or A35 van on the right hand side there? Again, I wonder if any of these cars survived. I mean, that Holden, it's obviously a bit knocked about, but I can't see too much rust on it. So uh, you'd have thought that would definitely go again. All those panels will bolt on. So it uh, just depends how bad it is on the other side, I suppose, that we can't see many, many more old survivors here. There's an E83 W van just there, a white one on the right hand side, and that's face to face with an Austin 10 Cambridge. Uh, what else have we got? What else can we see here? What's that black car on the left hand side there with the oval rear window? Clearly something American, probably late 1940s. And uh, yeah, we've got left type Victor at the bottom left there too. More Singer goodness there. There must be so many Singer spares still there. I hope someone from the Singer Owners Club is watching this because uh, if you need any bits, try and go over there and fill up a container and ship them back over here. And alongside the Singer, it appears to be the cab of a Ford Model AA truck. You can just about see the scuttle with a very distinctive curved beading on it. Um, yeah, so I think that was a Model AA. Another overall view of the yard here. I can just about see a Bedford on the left there with a, that's a Bedford CA. You can just see the back end of, isn't it? But yeah, 
commercial vehicles, cars, vans, trucks and so on. And then the oddball little estate car just at the bottom left there with a, another car's roof just perched against it. What a place. Oh dear. This will be good news for anyone who likes their old Jowitts. We've got a Jowett Bradford here. That's a great old car that is, isn't it? And an F-Type Victor just peeking in at the bottom left there. Something for everyone at this yard. Uh, that looks like a 100E Ford at the top left there with no rear axle on it. Um, but yeah, I wonder if that Jowett's still there. Does anyone know? Same for this. We've got a, oof, a standard Vanguard Estate. And that could be a Phase 1A with a slightly chunkier grille or the Phase 2. I'm not quite sure from this angle. Uh, but either way, those early standard Vanguard wagons are a rare thing indeed now. And hopefully, uh, if this one didn't go back on the road, at least it provided many, many spare parts to keep other standards on the road. Another overall view now of so many cars. Good grief. There are so many cars to go at, some of them British. There's a nice PA Cresta or a Velox there in the middle of the red one. A nice estate behind it based on what is that? It's in one of those Morris Oxford estates, isn't it? The all steel estates, four door car. Quite a rare thing now. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Good grief. Yeah, this was obviously the view. I think these photos, some of these photos have got a date of 1979 on the back of them. Um, so we're going back well over 40 years now, but I'm sure the place looks very similar to this. I've seen videos, walk around videos taken in more recent years of this place and some of these vehicles are still there but looking a lot worse than they were back in here in the late 1970s. Now we've got a few photographs here of inside the yard where parts have been taken from cars that have been broken up and the spares being sold on. Look at all those lamps. I mean good heavens there's an old Dodge hubcap hanging up up there as well. What an incredible place to route around. It'd be worth going back to New Zealand just to visit this place. Absolutely incredible. Grills, as far as you can see, all sorts of wheels and wheel trims hanging up there from the rafters. Just, just amazing. Can we identify any of those grills there on the left hand side? I can see an A30 grill at the top there. Not quite sure what the ones underneath it are. I can see a Morris Z van grill on the left hand side as well. But yeah, that, oh, God. <laughs> look at that. Apologies if I'm getting too excited, but um, well. What a place to have a mooch around this would be. I wonder, if it's still, I wonder if there's still quite so many of these old parts there, or whether they've gradually been replaced with newer cars as newer cars have come in. Almost at the end of this particular photo collection at Horopito Motors, but yeah, what a place here. We've got the counter here where you could go and ask for your parts. Also, look at all those steering wheels hanging up from the ceiling. Heavens above, we've got an old artillery type wheel leaning against the counter there as well. What a place to be. We're back outside again. I'm not sure if this is in the yard or just outside of the yard, but either way, doesn't really matter. Got a Morris 6 there in the middle. You can just see the grill very distinctive on the Morris 6 and probably another one alongside on the right there. And in the distance, one of the E-series cars, probably a Vauxhall Wyvern, maybe a Cresta or a Velox, but maybe the four-cylinder Wyvern, doesn't really matter, but it's definitely an E-series. And again, I think this was photographed nearby. We've got another one of those Morris Oxford Estates, I think, and an A40 or an A50 Cambridge in the middle, and another Morris alongside that. Someone's had the front wing off that and the headlights, so they're beginning to be picked over. I'm sure they're not there anymore. But wow, that photograph, anyway, completes this collection of fantastic pictures that I'm so grateful to Peter Ward for. Um, like I say, he visited in the late 1970s when he was over in New Zealand. And uh, fortunately, he had his camera with him when he visited Horopito Motors, the Smash Palace. Thank you very much for watching. There are other videos about scrap yards in the olden days and in more recent times, so have a quick look around before you disappear. And there'll be more videos along on the old classic car channel before too long, so uh, keep an eye on things here. Bye for now.